would like to welcome everybody today to our uh, session on using Google Plus in education. And our presenter is Grace Estevan, who is passionate about the integration of technology and education. It makes teaching and learning fun and accessible anytime, anywhere, and shareable. So, <laughs> Simulation, serious games, and using social networking and education are part of the realm Grace wishes to be in for a long time. She has given talks and training to various educators and conferences in the US. Grace taught teachers how to use Twitter as a back channel and an alternative to student response system in the class since 2009 in the Advanced Technology Education Conference in Washington, DC. She gave out pointers how to animate presentations and make it look appealing and fun using PowerPoint at the online teaching conference last year. Yay! Her latest presentation was about the potential use of Google Plus in higher education in the Winter Working Connections Conference in Frisco, Texas, just last January of this year. Grace is a tech junkie. She believes that technology has the capacity and power to answer today's educational challenges. She is fervently believes in emergency <laughs> emergency emerging technologies and should be inter that should be introduced and used in academia to further improve its present state. She is currently the senior management and campus coordinator at Evans City College of San Francisco. Grace is also a Moodle course developer and designer at Golden State University in San Francisco. So Marty now turns it all the way over to Grace. Thank you so much, Marty, and thank you so much to all the participants. I really appreciate that you're spending your lunch with me. Um, unfortunately, I ate already, <laughs> so at least you, I can concentrate now in just um, doing a, a hopefully a good presentation for you all. So I am going to uh, turn off the camera now so we can focus on the um, presentation. Okay. Here, I think I already did. Okay, great. So um, before I start, I would like to um, ask everyone: um, How many of you heard Google Plus? So just like what Marty said a while ago, you can either click on the check or the X mark. Okay, there's quite a few. So how about how many has used Google Plus? How many have used it? Used it, yes. Okay, almost the same. Okay. And my last question is um, how many of you has an existing Google Plus account? Well, that's interesting. There's more people that have an existing account than have actually used it. That's 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 really good. So at least now I know um, um, my my audience. So let me shift here. Okay. So Google Plus. Actually, we're going to focus on the definition first. Google Plus um, defines or they define themselves as like real life sharing resource for the web. But if you're going to look around and then um, read all the bloggers and what did they think about the Google Plus, you will actually see this, a social network site whose diverse and robust features aim to rival Facebook. And actually, if we're going to um, have a graphical representation of this, it will look like this, kaboom. <laughs> After all, it's a billion dollar industry. So uh, we all understand why uh, Google Plus wants to be wants to beat Facebook. So just some trivia. As of March 1, 2012, Google Plus has 100 billion users worldwide. Last year, when they announced, uh, when they launched it last July, they had about 10 million only after a month. 
So 100 million as of March 1, they're really growing exponentially. And we will find out later why. Currently, there are 29 million 622,133 males and only 13,843, 777 females. So which means there are more guys than girls. Why? We don't know yet. But I would like to tell you also that the data that I've given you, um, Google Plus, Google Plus said that there's a lot of unverified accounts. There's about 45 million of uh, unverified accounts. So we don't know if uh, 30 million of the 45 million unverified accounts are actually females. Uh, also, Google Plus uh, searchers overwhelmingly skew towards 18 to 34 years old, which basically explains that there's more people like this than grandpa and grandma. It's self-explanatory, but uh, I'll tell you later that actually the, some of the coolest people that have used Google Plus are actually our dear grandma and grandpa. So enough of the trivia. We, uh, as educators and as students, for example, we want to find out, is Google Plus really for education? Is there a potential use? And as a student, how can I benefit from this new social networking site? And as a teacher, how can I take advantage of some of the features of Google Plus? So what I'm going to uh, do, um, before I continue, by the way, um, as you can tell, my uh, English is not my first language. So please feel free to, um, to raise your hand just in case I talk too slow or too fast or my diction is not really that clear. So at least um, I'll be mindful and try to um, try to talk slow, slowly. So first, I will give you all the features and then the definition and then the samples where we could possibly use the feature of Google Plus. And then later on, it's up to you um, you can be as creative as you want and how you want to um, use Google Plus. And I would really appreciate if you can send me an email later where do you use Google Plus after attending this session. So the first one is circles. So this is the this is how Google Plus looks like. So you have your profile picture, you have your name, and then on top of your name, there's small icons. And then this one here is actually the icon for the circles. And here on the left side, there are two sets of pictures. The first one is actually those people who, um, who are within your circles. And then the second one are those people who added you. So there are some tricks, actually, if you want to hide all those people who added you or all those people in your circles. And um, I'll, I'll show you later if we have time. So you can set your own privacy, and there's no problem. So circles is defined as categorizing the group of people you know and follow. So for example, this, uh, these are samples of um, my uh, circles. I have the tech industry. There's a bunch of uh, really great Google Plusers that um, post good articles about the tech industry. For, for me, I don't really have the time to read all the good articles out there. So I really appreciate if uh, so the, the people that I, uh, that I follow, they post really good articles there. And as you can see, there's about 200. And then Moodle, because I'm a course developer and designer, um, I follow about 27 experts in, in Moodle. And of course, educators, and then the photographers. And by the way, with all my circles, these are also shareable. So at the end, I can, I can see that there's a bunch of you who are existing Google Plus account already. If you want to um, get my circle for educators, just, just send me an email, and I will uh, share you the, my, some of my circles. You can label your circles however you want. So here I have the Android App Inventor. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They Google recently gave up on the App Inventor, and MIT got them. So hopefully, um, MIT will release them as an open source as well, so our students can use it again. And Android Ice Cream, 
there's only one expert there, serious games, and Schemer. Schemer is the new social network also of Google Plus, and I have a lot of invites. If you want to try Schemer, just send me an email. There are various ways of adding people in your circle. So the first one, contacts. So before you um, open an account, the, you have to have a Gmail account, existing Gmail account already. And then Google will actually ask you, hey, these are all the people in your account. Do you want to um, put them in your circle? So as soon as you put them in your circle, Google will notify, Gmail will notify your um, contacts that um, you added them in your circle. And it's a good, wa it's a good way of marketing the, uh, uh, the site as well, because if I receive an, an email and notifying me that a friend of mine added me in the circle, I would be a little bit curious of what Google Plus is. And adding smart Google Plusers, that's the second one. So Bill Gates, uh, I, I don't think any one of you will, will argue with me that Bill Gates is one of the uh, smart people in the world. Unfortunately, when you go to his uh, Google Plus, he doesn't post a lot of stuff there. I don't think he posted anything, So, but he has a fan page. And I will show you later uh, who are the real uh, smart Google Plusers. The third one is adding people who added you. So here for, I have, uh, there's 210 people that added me in their circles, and these are their, some of their photos. So potential, potential use in education, that's the million dollar question. You can actually use the circles for your classes, like CNIT 131 or um, Biology 101 or courses. You can be as creative as you want, as I've said. You can have a circle for your A students and for your D students. And don't worry if you label some of your students as D. It's because you're the only person who will actually see the labels. It is not public. And then you can also label administrators and fellow educators. I also have circles. For, uh, I have a circle that was shared to me in Google+. Plus. Um, uh, the names of the administrators, principals that are public on Google+. Plus. So if you want them, I can also share them with you. The second one is the Google Messenger. This is self-explanatory because Google um, Messenger can be accessed using smartphones and it's free text service globally and can only add up to 50 people within your circle. Let me see here. Potential use in education. So let me uh, stop there for a while. I just w want to ask if there's any questions at the moment, or are you OK? Oh, Karen has a question in the chat window. So the question is, I did find the circle concept some, somewhat non-intuitive at first. About, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you so much about that, Karen. So um, to continue about the free bulk text messaging, uh, you can use it for um, texting the students about their assignments, absence, and emergency notices. So I used to work for the Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs in City College of San Francisco. And sometimes I would receive calls from, the facu from faculty members that they will not be able to make it to the class in less than 30 minutes. And I have to get a student assistant or an assistant to post uh, a notice on the uh, uh, on the door of the the classroom, and and the teacher felt so bad that because it's unexpected and all all that stuff. But um, we understand that some emergencies happen. And can you imagine if you can just text your students that you won't be able to make it to the class? And some would argue, well, can we not just email them? But you know, honestly, you and I know how many of our students read their emails, right? But for the text messaging, as soon as that beep, they'll look at the text message right away and, well, believing that it might be their crush or their boyfriend or their girlfriend. Anyway, it's just the teacher. But you get the other one.
for emergencies. It's really important that some, well, we have the um, not all schools have the um, emergency tech capability. Um, in San in City College, we have one, but it will be nice if all the schools can actually um, text message their students right away if there's some kind of an emergency in the school. The third feature is what we call what's hot. So it used to be Sparks, that's the name of what's hot, but I will probably Google Plus things that uh, thought that Spark is not really that appealing, so they deleted it and changed it to what's hot. So what's hot is actually trending topics just like on Twitter, articles people like, shared, or commented on. So if you're on Facebook or you're on Twitter, you can actually um, uh, like, uh, click the like button of an article or a posting that you like. On Twitter, um, if you when when you see the hashtag something like this, when you click on that one and then put, a, for example, the name of Mitt Romney or politics or something that uh, like that, then you will you will actually um, see what what the people have been talking about. So you can put their hashtag. Uh, Super Tuesday, and then you can find out what the people are interested in. So this is an example of what's hot. So this is posted by CC Chapman, and this is about the people of Walmart, sexy and I know it. Um, actually, if you're going to really focus on it, I'm not thinking of the video, not this one, but this one. There were 508 people who already um, plus one the, the, the video. That's why it made it to the What's Hot feature, feature in Google, in Google Plus. So the potential use in education. Being up to date with current affairs, like journalism or broadcasting classes, for example, you can always ask your students or as a teacher to go on what's hot and what people are talking about. Knowing what's hot or not in technology, learning tools, mobile apps, web 2.0 classes, there's a lot of um, uh, students always who want to get into the web 2.0 classes or even mobile programming classes. So what's hot will actually give you um, some of the uh, uh, latest trends. And to give you an example, this is this made it to the what's hot. Why? Because as you can see, there were 307 uh, plus one and 112 shares already. This is about this is from the Android developer, and they um, were and they were talking about some. Um, um, expanding the Android app size to 4 gigabytes. So this is really interesting. And then the second one is photography. This is a new um, file in photography. It's the they call liquid photography. And this made it also to the what's hot. So the third is current events. So um, Tim O'Reilly is basically talking about the uh, secret TP, um, the trade uh, the TPP, which is, I, I have it here. Um, similar, it's not similar to SOPA PPA, but it's like a secret um, deal that he wants everybody to find out and check. And so far, um, well, maybe later on you just, um, uh, if you have questions, we'll just have a question and answer, so we will read all your questions, and I'll try as much as I can to answer them. The fourth feature is what Google Plus calls Hangout. So um, this, for me, this is the coolest feature of Google Plus, and I'll tell you why. It's video conferencing with screen sharing. You can add up to eight, or actually up to ten people in your circle from all over the world, for free. So um, you know the teleconferencing and web conferencing that you need to pay uh, for Google Plus Hangout. You don't need to do that. So could this be the end of C6 Secret for Illuminate? I don't know. I hope not. So. 
Um, I will show you a sample of a Google Plus Hangout. And again, I am going to um, uh, do a web tour. Just give me a sec. This video is actually, of, of course, the Dalai Lama, as you can see there, and Desmond Tutu. Um, on the 80th birthday of Desmond Tutu, his birthday wish is actually to talk to the Dalai Lama. But the problem is, okay, I'll, I'll finish the video before I'll tell you the story. Grace, mine just ended. Okay, great. No, no worries. So, um, I can now. I will just continue. So, um, the and you can watch the video later on. So, um, the Dalai Lama, uh, Desmond Tutu wants to talk to the Dalai Lama, but because of some security reasons, he cannot travel to Africa. So, um, one of the Google guys in South Africa who's visiting Desmond Tutu at that time said, we have a Google Plus Hangout that we would like to test. So maybe, you know, he can, he can test it with the Dalai Lama. And I got this information, by the way, when I attended one of the TEDx conference where uh, the guy who um, had the Google Plus was there. So he told us this story. So he set it up. Um, and then the Dalai Lama was just so happy to use the technology. And this is the famous picture of him when he was having that porn thing because Desmond Tutu is actually uh, asked him, um, what do you think the Chinese, something like that government thinks of you? And he said, they think of me like a demon. So, and he has, you know, put the horn and they're so scared of me. So it went viral actually. So that's one. And then, um, potential use in education. So it's good for online tutoring, online office hours, and even group discussions. And a while ago, Marty said, um, uh, hang out with a limited audience. It, it is actually uh, true because you only have to have up to 10 um, webcams there to be used. But in each webcam, you can have like 1,000 or 500 people. Um, but uh, one of the limitations of Google Hangout is there's no archiving. So unless you have a screen capture that you can record the, the session, then that would be great. But at the moment, there's no um, recording for the Google Hangout, a uh, Google Flash Hangout. And it can be an alternative to extensive telepresence and online collaboration software. Um, you have to install Google Video Plugin for the first time if you're going to use it for the first time. But it's very easy. It's just you know a few clicks away. So um, I'll show you some of the samples again of the the Google. She's um, this is actually um, um, she's just an office person who who got a this this sombrero from Mexico and she wants to show to everybody. But this particular um, event is um, showing uh, different uh, cultures. So these are all the participants and they made it uh, live that people can 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 check and watch. Uh, this is me. So um, and this is the Google Hangout. Uh, I was on the plane going to Frisco, Texas. And uh, if you ride Virgin Airlines, they will actually give you Google Chrome, which has free internet connection. And as soon as you reach 10,000 uh, feet above, um, you will have internet access. And it's pretty good. So I was having um, Hangout with some of my friends there. So as a teacher, for example, or as a student, if you want to communicate with your friends or with your stu uh, student or your classmates, you can uh, use Google Hangout even if you're up in the air. And this is a sample that was um, sent, that was shared by Tom Anderson. So Tom Anderson, um, if if any one of you remembers, uh, he is the uh, 
the guy, the MySpace guy. So he's in he's one of the most hallowed Google Plusers. So this one he posted something from Sarah Hill, who's from University of Missouri School of Journalism. So Sarah has a broadcasting uh, uses Google Plus Hangout for the for broadcasting, for alternative TV broadcasting. So she will tell her students, for example, that at this certain time we're going to um, air, to be, we're going on air. So this, the, some of the classmates will watch. So they have a, a, a real studio set up with camera, good lighting and everything, but they just make it available on the web. And this teacher here, she is teaching Photoshop. So Google Plus has a screen. Um, um, you can basically uh, share your screen. So this is this. These are some of her students. These are some of her students, and this is her screen. So so far, I hope that. Um, I'm not going too fast or it's not too slow. So I'm going to continue. The The next one is instant upload. So instant upload is actually explanatory, self-explanatory. It's for uploading photos and videos from your phone, tablet, or des desktop instantly. Um, later on, I'm going to show my uh, desktop so I can um, let you see where you can find the uh, instant upload on Google Plus. So potential use in education. Um, you can if you're if you're um, an art teacher, you can use this uh, to critique an artwork uh, for pho photography, uh, billboard ads critique, for example, advertising and and business class. So again, you can be as creative as you want on how you can use the instant upload. Most of our students at the moment own smartphones. So they can they can take a picture of anything and then post it right away online. So why not take advantage of that and use it uh, for the class? So additional features. Um, Google Plus says sharing, and I put their SEOs because it means search engine optimization. This is um, sharing is very important for um, in order for your site or for your article to rank high. And the reason why I put the why I mentioned the search engine optimization, you can actually Google what does that mean. But I'm pretty sure most of you knows it already. Um, it's it's if you own a website and you want to rank high, you want as many um, visitors as you want to your website. And how are you going to invite visitors in your website? There are several ways. And um, this, this sharing on Google is just one way as a my example because Google, uh, being the giant search engine, really wants to make sure that if you're going to use their sharing and if you're going to have your website with them and if you're going to just use Google in everything that you do, they will promise you that they're going to help you when it comes to ranking high. Is it true? Is it possible? I, I don't know. I haven't um, investigated too much on that one. But um, for Google, um, this is one of the things that they 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 told the search engine optimization companies that um, they have some of the things that um, the the people need in order for their website to rank higher. Um, this I don't know if you can see it. So the twenty three shared. So when this is an article by Peach uh, posting by Peach. Cashmore, he's from the Mashable, a very popular guy as well. So here, 23 shares. It means um, the 23 people on Google Plus click on this link, click on this share link. They either put a comment on that and then shared it on their um, individual post. So there were 23 people for the plus one. But it's also part of the search engine optimization. So uh, uh, using the example of 
uh, customers um, posting. So on top of the 23 shared, you will see you will see there plus 97. So which means there were 97 people who liked their this article, but they may either comment on that one or they just liked it. They didn't do anything, but they did not share this article. So there's a big difference for the share. When you click on that one, it this one, the article will be automatically posted on your page for the plus one you will just you're just telling the person who posted it that you like it so that's the difference yes yes Sally is is, is very right uh, it's like it's similar to like on Facebook so um, the the other feature is games so I haven't played that much um, on Google Plus, um, I believe that it lacks serious games. Serious game is actually the educational games, and I hope and what I actually dream is that there will be more uh, serious games in Google Plus. So so far, these are the games uh, on Google. These are the um, trending or hot games. Um, it's it's a little bit frustrating that there's really no um, serious games. So. Hope, hopefully, there will be more um, developers that will be interested in developing serious games for students and will be available online using the Google Plus. So, conclusion. Student collaboration and engagement, you can use Huddle, Hangout, and Games. Huddle is, this is the text messaging. For the hybrid learning, you can either use Hangouts. Um, well, actually, you can only use Hangouts. I haven't um, um, tested other uh, features yet so far. This is the most I recommend. Use Hangouts if you're in, if you a hybrid uh, learning instructor. For office hours, you can also use Hangouts. And uh, the last, these are the resources, and I think um, Marty posted it on the chat line, so you can definitely um, check all the resources. And thank you very much. So this is my Google Plus account, Grace Esteban, and this is my email, mesteban at ccsf.edu. You can email me or you can uh, add me in your circle so we can start um, um, Google Plusing. <laughs> so that's all. So thank you so much for listening and uh, uh, hope I you learned something. So Marty, I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet. Does anybody have any? Uh, oh, there are questions coming up. So um, I've just got everything up here now. Uh, Sally says, could you clarify what a huddle is? Oh, well, huddle is that. Sally, thank you so much for your question. Um, huddle is text messaging. If you have a smartphone and you um, download the Google Plus, um, there's an option there for the huddle. It's only for text messaging. And uh, there are some questions about where the slides are available, and I'll put up the URL in just uh, a minute so you can download it. But it's the same URL, the same site that you signed up for with the seminar. And I'm going to take a second here and we'll pull up uh, the uh, evaluation for this seminar on you should be seeing it in uh, a browser window please fill it out and it will be uh, it'll give us some great information not only how well you like this particular seminar but any ideas that you have for other ones you'd like and Ashley asks if you have a phone camera, the front facing, you can use Google Hangout unless it's called Huddle. Um, actually, I'm so sorry. I don't have an answer for that. I think because I've only used Huddle for text messaging, I haven't used Huddle for um, video. 
And Donna says you can do a Hangout from your smartphone, too. So I, yes. I don't... That's true. That Don, Donna is correct. Yeah, you can you can use um, Hangout from your phone as well. So Susan, um, she asked, can you filter what's hot so that it only pertains to things you want to see? Unfortunately, no, because um, what's hot is uh, there's an algorithm behind it that um, if if it generates a lot of shares and plus one, it will automatically be. Um, on what's hot. But if you want, so I'm going to, um, if, if I can share my desktop, um, so at least I can show you. So here in Google Plus, so um, if you will type, for example, hash, hashtag, and then let's say education, So you will see here um, all the people that posted education, and but sometimes it it cannot be compared to um, what's hot because um, it does it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of people liked it or shared it. But if you're looking for a particular um, um, a, a particular posting or a trend, then you can use the hashtag and then just type it, and then it will, you know. Hopefully, yeah, it will appear here. And um, other than that, um, this this guy here, Robert Cobble, if you're into technology, by the way, he's really a he's resource person. 783,000 people are following him in um, on Google+, Plus, so you can check him as well. And as promised, um, I'm supposed to show you the uh, instant upload. If you can see here, um, this is the camera. I, I took a picture a while ago and it, it, it came up here. So, but this is not publicly yet unless, unless, you, um, unless you click this, this one this year, uh, the number two, or this picture. Then this is the instant upload. So um, there's a okay. Go ahead. Oh, Karen asks, uh, does Grace or anyone here have experience with asking students to sign up for Gmail? They sometimes have trouble keeping track of their email accounts, checking mail, etc. I found that many students are using Yahoo for their mail. So um, at City College, we have actually um, Gmail account for our students. So um, that's their first. Gmail account like ccsf at gmail.com, something, their name and then ccsf and then gmail. So um, we never had any problem asking them because um, they're supposed to have a Gmail account with us. Um, but it's true that um, they're having trouble tracking their emails. But they're only having trouble, I guess, tracking their emails because they only want to see and read the emails that they want to see. So um, sometimes that's the trick of the students. Like, I cannot check my emails. I don't know. But you know, they they know that they are multitaskers. And Belinda asks, Have you heard of Class Parrot? And if so, how does Google Plus compare? I I'm sorry, Belinda. I haven't heard of Class Parrot. Uh, and Greg asked, does uh, CCSF accounts include Google Apps like Google Plus? And is there any concerns regarding FERPA and other issues with Google uh, tools? Um, we actually have a teacher here from CCSF, Donna. She's one of our experts. Um, because for me, I haven't, um, I haven't heard any trouble. Um, you said about, did you mention SOPA or? FERPA. That's that's student privacy issues. Oh, okay. Well, um, I haven't heard about that. That's an issue here. So, and Donna says that they that she thinks they don't automatically include anything other than email. Have Gmail accounts, but not Google Plus accounts. 
So Google Plus, as I've said, celebrate its one year this July. So um, I don't think that a lot of people um, use this Google Plus or a lot of people have heard about Google Plus. Uh, Donna says I can ask them to create a Google Plus account, and some do, but some don't. I personally use it just for extras. And Karen says it's true. Google Plus is not automatic with uh, Gmail. You do need to sign up for Gmail for any of Google's other features. That's that's the first step. So I said, okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask, is there any other questions or things that we may have missed in the chat room? And Donna says, you can collectively share a Google document in a Google Hangout, which is a cool way to collaboratively work on a document and speak to each other at the same time. Ooh, nice point, Donna. Yes, thank you, Donna. Sherry says, I'd be worried about unequal distribution of educational supplements if they don't all comply with a Google Plus account. I think the way around it is Donna's suggestion of just using it for extras. Uh, Dr. Steve says, there are both private Google accounts and educational accounts. OK, I didn't know that. And Ashley says, well, technically, it's called a Google account now, but the email but email is their automatic way to communicate with the person or the account. You can forward all your email and just use Google tools. That's true. I, I tend to do what Ashley has. I have a Google email account, but I forward it to another mail account. And Dipali said, privacy always an issue, but could be used as an alternative thing. Yes, I, I agree. Um, it's, it's just difficult. Uh, the privacy issue is a very sensitive issue right now on the web. But you know, it, it's, you have to use this with caution of, uh, still. So. It says, right, if a school gives you a Google account, it will have to be the school's domain address and have the and the student may also have their own private account. That's true. That's not always the student. May, most likely, it's not the student's only account. Uh, Jenny asks, if we can save the chat now, will we get all that's been in the chat? Save it. Not, not updates after you save the chat window. And Dr. Steve says, the educational accounts are set up by the institution. Yes, um, that's that's correct, Dr. Steve, because you have to pay for it. The institution has to pay for it. It's not free. So I guess that's about it. And you can now have 13 minutes lunch before you go back to your work. <laughs> so thank you so much for um, Oh, Sherry's got a question. Okay. And I, I don't know the answer to this one. What is the investment in an educational account? I don't know those costs. Do you know anything about that? Well, actually, it's as cheap as $50 all the way to thousands of dollars. It depends on how many people, how many students. So. Yes, the Google Apps um, for Education is free, but setting up the Google account for your school is not. Yeah, institutional memberships do cost more, uh, and, and it does it doesn't mean how many how many people you're involved. Any more questions? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Gracie.
<laughs> and then just don't forget to email me if you uh, think of other questions and just add me in your Google Plus account. Oh, look at this. Stephanie says, just a note, we have some instructors who use Angry Birds for physics or math. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, Ashley says they maintain on this campus that some online students need to use tools above and beyond, and many instructors require publisher accounts, text, and, con and content. If an online tool is free, then there's minimal impact on the students. But I could see a disability when access is a concern, and that's an ongoing issue. And Ashley, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I agree. True. Oh, Sherry wants to know if you could repeat the number of males versus females on Google+. Plus. I think, do you want to cue that slide up, Grace? And I'll just say, I remember it was something like two males to every female of the numbers they have. Let's see here. OK. There we are. Yeah. Oh, it's more than two. Mm -hmm. But again, um, there are also unverified accounts. So this could either be, um, there could be more males, or there could be more females. Like there, there's like 45 million unverified accounts. OK, it looks like we're, we're winding down. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks again, Grace, and for everybody for attending. Appreciate and it. If you want to stick around a little bit for a few more questions, please do. Bye now. Bye.